Okay, hello and welcome to an advanced clothing creation. Uh, I want to thank 100 subscribers first. I want to thank 10,000 views so far on the previous t-shirt and trousers creation tutorial that I made. Um, I thank anyone that continued throughout the whole series and now I'm starting a new series on advanced clothing creation. Anything like texturing and stuff afterwards, you can find many, many tutorials on that, so um, we're not going to bother going through all that in the tutorial series. So we may get started, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you it first. So in edit mode, this is what we're looking at, and it's got a little bit of B-mesh here, which we could just fix with the knife tool with K. But, um, you know, it, we can use B-mesh, we may as well. Doesn't matter that much, uh, less faces the better or whatever. And that's not going to be the final result. I actually go into object mode, and when I used it in my animation, I had a subdivision on there and I had it in smooth shading. So that's kind of the final result right there. And it looks quite nice. It's, um, it's not going for realism, otherwise, I'd add seams down the side and you'd have seams on the arm and things like that. Uh, but it is going for like uh, character, so it's got some character in it. And uh, so we may as well get started. I'm going to look at the time that we are in, two minutes about. And I'm going to take it into flat shading, and I'm just going to press M to move it into another layer. So we're going to create the basic shape of this body here again. So uh, as close as possible we're going to create it. So what you want to do is you want to have the cursor positioned in the center of your character roughly where mine is to do with your character and a cube and we're going to form this into the shape. So let's go into object mode wireframe and this gets a bit repetitive so I'm going to speed up parts but what we want is to bring it down with a pretty big gap fairly big, you can, if I zoom in all the way, we don't want to bring it in straight to our clothing or our skin, because that's not, you know, it's not going to work, we're going to subdivide it, we're going to move it around a bit more, and it's, the closer it is, the harder it is to keep in line. So, take it with a reasonable gap on either side, using box select to select both vertices, because we, we want both of these, if I just pressed and clicked, we can see that I haven't selected the back one and I move it and I'm not, I'm just moving that corner. So def definitely go wireframe, box select and grab it and bring it roughly to the end of the shoulders with a reasonable gap in between whatever surface is below. And the same with down here. So A to deselect everything and G to grab, I want to grab that, and bring it in bring it up here, roughly the end of the hips, or the start of the hips even, uh, where the waist is, give it a good gap between the skin and again up. So that's basically how this one goes, we're going to start adding ring loops and cutting and things uh, throughout, but that's how we go. So we press 3 and now we do it from the other view, Z, um, A to deselect all, B, and grab this on the y-axis, leaving a little gap. Again here, A, B, G, Y, and leave a gap, A, B, G, Y, and leave a gap. So keep going like that, and bring them all in roughly to your character's proportions, and completely ignore that the chest right now is poking through and the back is also poking through. It's not very important at the moment, as we're going to keep refining it. And to start off with that refining, we add ring loops. So we want them vertical to cut out this going through here and that one there. So let's go here and add two. So two, and I'm going to press S and X, and that pulls them outwards. And I roughly want to pull them outwards, roughly to where the shoulders begin, so S, X, uh, and from neck. So let's bring box select, G, uh, oh, not G, Y that time, G, 
and leave a gap roughly there. This one here, G, and again, leave a gap. Down there is pretty much okay, we're not going to affect the bottom for going up and down, and we've got it sorted out there. And uh, now that we've got that, I'm just going to add one more ring loop in the middle. And I'm just going to select the whole front. I'm going to grab that on the y-axis until, until, hmm, until about there. We, we don't want to pull it out too much. Although we do want to pull it out, so actually I actually don't want to pull it out. I was going to pull it over the whole thing, but I suddenly changed my mind, which you'll find happening quite a bit. So it takes a bit of thought, and you're going to change your mind quite a lot, but GY, pull out a little bit. What I thought would work better is I've got this, and if I did some horizontal cuts, let's say 4, and then press 1, uh, 3 even, then we can pull that out a lot better. So A, B to select them all, G on the Y axis and just pull that out. A, B, G, Y. And I'm just going to speed this up. And then and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what I did on the on the front. I'm going to grab all these using circle select just to speed it up, and I'm going to pull them out as well. So I'm going to make sure I haven't got them with middle mouse button, and then escape G Y, pull that back a little bit. And now, because I feel that it's kind of quite far away, I think that I might just grab the whole thing and move it forwards a little bit and then scale it on the y-axis to pull that in just a tad. And um, what we're going to want to do now is we really want to firstly sort that out. And what I think I'll do is I will start to mirror it. So. I'm going to press 1, Z, A to deselect everything, B to select that half, X and vertices. So now I've got half of it. It doesn't matter which half you select, just as long as when you go into the mirror modifier, you either mirror it on the X or Y or whatever, as long as you get it in the right direction that um, you want. And so it works. And that's looking okay. Um, we also want to add clipping so that this middle line doesn't leave the middle. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these ones down there backwards. So grab on the y axis, pull them in like that. Then these ones I'm just going to do the same. G on the y axis until things start coming through. So that's looking okay. And uh, as for here, I'm going to want them, that one to be a little bit further out. I want that one to pass. So it's just a little circular there, so I'm going to grab that one out as well. And I kind of need to bring that, this part below here a little bit on the y-axis. So again, it takes a little bit of thinking to get into the first initial shape, and then you keep refining it, and we'll slowly get better and better. So even looking up here, that's clearly not, it's clearly too far away at the moment, so grab them too, and grab them inwards. We can pull these in as well, just until things start showing through, so I'll pull them back, pull that back a little bit. So you can see that we're starting to get like a lot of a shape in there. Uh, you might even want to pull them out a little bit more for a little bit more shape. 
And I think the final thing I'm going to do is add a ring loop there. And with that ring loop, grab the ones down the side there and grab them on the x-axis. Pull them out a little bit. So we've got kind of a barrel around this guy. Oops, grow it on the x-axis. And that's starting to look okay. So we've got like a barrel, as I say, around the person. And that's kind of the basic starting shape. Then you can see that we're going to extrude the arms from this kind of area here. And we can obviously extrude the rest of it down from here. So a lot to do. Uh, that will be part one. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. I think we'll get around to the sleeves next and then more refining. But I thank you for watching and I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the series. Bye.